So, welcome back. Can you guys hear me? Let me see if uh, any of you replied to me. Can you hear? Okay. So, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure. Excellent. Excellent. Well, so welcome to week 14, lecture A. So let me do this. So in week, huh? Oh, we can write. So we are in week 14, lecture A. So today is uh, Wednesday, April, what, 24th? Yeah, I think it's 24th. Oh, no, 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 22nd, sorry. Starting from this week, we are going to focus on mechatronic sensors, and mainly for motion. Uh, motion has something linked to a mechatronics. Uh, mechatronics. So this is a fundamental uh, part of the sensor. So we are going to first of all talking about those accuracies, uh, those sensitivities uh, about sensors. Then after that, we are going to talk about generally uh, what are the motion transducers. A general discussion. Then we are going to talk about uh, the types of uh, motion transducers. So just to let you know that uh, for the motion, you have a displacement X, okay? And uh, you have uh, speed, you have acceleration. And uh, what is the uh, acceleration's uh, derivative? This is called zero. So we're going to move forward from here. So we talked about the purpose of measurement. Uh, so three purposes, okay, three purposes. The first one is for um, monitoring. The second is control. The third one is training, okay. So as you can see, it is essential, okay, essential. So if you cannot measure, you cannot control, okay? Measure before you control, okay? Measure before you control. But in management, it's the same. So if you cannot measure, you cannot manage. It's the same thing, you have to be quantitative. And also, sometimes you measure not just for control, probably you only want to take a look of uh, performance evaluation. Okay? So measurement is considered as a subsystem. Okay, it's not just a component of a subsystem within the control system. Okay, so uh, then you have a, a whole loop of uh, actions like. Uh, to do modifying the signal, and you have conditioning hardware, like filters, amplifiers, demod, and even in the end, AD converters, analog to digital. Analog to digital. Digital. Okay. Digital. So. And we have talked about this thing a, a lot in the beginning. Uh, remember, I one of the physics I told you 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 cascaded with uh, is not 0 0.25. So using a two uh, a voltage divider cascaded like this, so we have 
potentiometer, it has scheduled with another potentiometer. So this is a 0.5, this is a 0.5, then cascade together, it's not 0.25, it's actually in the middle, it will 0.20 in one of the quizzes. I hope you still remember. I hope you will never forget this impedance matching. But this can be solved if we put in, in here as an OPM, okay? OPM. Or solve all that impedance matching issue, okay? Another thing is regarding the accuracy, okay? If you buy a sensor, you need to say, oh, what's my accuracy? And there are other uh, specifications like uh, resolution, like sensitivity, and so on and so forth. So, so it's in the feedback path of the control system. So the measurement subsystem, okay, subsystem. Okay. So it's something like what we said, if your sensor is garbage, then your output control system performance is also garbage. So we say we have something here, G-I-G-O, do you know this? Garbage in, garbage out, okay? So now sensitivity, we're going to zooming about this is very interesting as well. So if you have some slight fluctuations, say for example, your resistor has a resistance, could be dependent on environmental temperature, could be like humidity as well, and so on, so on, so on. even uh, some other factors. Okay. So I want to understand if I change my uh, Delta T, what is my uh, Delta R, right? So those sensitivity analysis. And some of the sensitivity cannot be reduced, okay, by increasing the scan. We'll show you on that. Okay. So, so we, we want in a strategy for design the control system. So you want to make the measurement as accurate as possible. But the question is, it comes as a cost. So you don't want to be uh, more accurate than really needed. Okay? So we need a, a suitable controller to take care of the other types of errors. So these are just discussions. I'm going to show you the equations soon. Okay, so a lot of sensors actually are initially uh, analog, but later on you can wrap up with uh, wrap up with embed uh, with a digital control and so on and so forth. You can do a digital representation of those measured analog signals. So the signal originally is usually analog. Okay, so let's take a look at the sensitivity. So I said that uh, you have a sensor. So this is some, something you want to measure. Go through the sensor, you get uh, Y. And Y equals related to X is F of X. So this is the simple static relationship. So now I'm testing, if I change delta X, what is delta Y? So you know, you learned that this is nothing but uh, differentiation. Uh, partial y of this, uh, this f of x. This f sub x is, is, a, is a partial with respect to the x. So let's assume you know what is the relative error. So you change a little bit, then over the original one. So this is called percentage, okay? Then change, percentage. So in fact, you should multiply 100 and do this. It's called a percentage. So that's the absolute error. This is a relative error. Okay, so this is a percentage. And this is also a percentage. And what's in between here is um, the range of, you can see, uh, you divide the y both sides. Then you move this one to here, or x in here. You put x in here. So you have x divided by y divided by x. 
So that's your relative okay, coefficient about, say for example, this one goes to 1% and uh, this could be like 10, 11%. So that's bad, right? So you slight change. So it's, we say this is so since 10 times sensitive to this change. So that all depends on that. There's a, something like a gain, okay? Sensitivity gain. So if you gain greater than one, you amplify the sensitivity. If less than one, you attenuate it. So this is, of course, uh, preferred, okay? Preferred. But in reality, you don't have a lot of control over this gain. But in control system, you do have a, a handle on that, okay? So that's a simple uh, sensor sensitivity analysis. We have absolute error and relative error, okay? Relative error. So if I give you an F, you should be able to come out what is the gain here, okay? So let's define the symbol. It's called the sensitivity of output Y with respect to the, the, uh, the relative change of X. So these are all in terms of uh, relative change. So that is my gain, in fact. Okay, so in fact, this percentage is, and this is percentage, this is the, the sensitivity factor, okay? Yeah. Sensitivity, sensitivity factor, okay? Sensitivity factor. So how to get this one? There's some change, it's interesting. So you do uh, divide it by Y, so you, this is a log and a log, so it's a beautiful. Right. So let's see an example. If you have uh, y is sine x, okay, sine x, so you have something like this. You can continue have some other things. So you may say this is not a sensor. The sensor usually is like this is the thing I want to measure, and this thing uh, is my measured. Uh, they are supposed to be uh, something like this, okay? <laughs> Which is right. But however, in the, in the, in the sinusoid, you can see if you stick with this small region, it is actually quite a linear, okay? Quite a linear. So just to use this range of a, a linearity. Range of linearity. We'll come back to the linearity issue later. But for this function, and uh, you can do this uh, dy dx is cosine x, x divided by y. So then you can, because y itself is sine x, so we put everything is x, okay? So everything is x. So it is a uh, sensitivity function of this one. You express it as a function of x, okay? Uh, so that's a simple derivation. Okay, so now you can see being able to do a differentiation and integration is very essential in engineering. Here, as an example, you can differentiation to derive, okay, to derive. You can derive the sensitivity function, okay? So, <clears throat> by many cases, sensitivity in the closed control system to parametric variations and parametric uncertainty. We better to <coughs> take a look at this picture. Okay, so remember your system here may have something changing. Say for example, delta t, okay? Because some parameters of the system changing. Also some changes in here, you may have a small delta t in here changing, okay? So let's first to see why, do you guys know why did that? So here we are going to answer this question, okay? Feedback from sensitivity, from, from sensitivity point of view. Point of view, 
I'm, I'm putting my chat box open here in case you have questions. You just type in a, a chat pop in the chat, okay? So let's continue. <clears throat> suppose we don't use feedback, okay? Suppose we don't use feedback, okay? Then this is called open loop, okay? Open loop. Open system. So this is the reference, this is my output. <clears throat> Don't get bothered about the C, okay, and R. R is the reference, C is the controller variable, okay? So, so then the T we use is called closed loop transfer function, yeah? The system transfer function is called closed loop overall from, from, from R to C. From R to C. In this case, it's from here to here. Okay. So of course, in this case, it's from output is the input. So now let's discuss. I'm going to discuss if I have something changing G, how this G will affect my T. Okay. So T is the closed loop. Uh, so the overall system changes function. So we use the definition. This is the definition. This is also the definition. Okay. We do T partial T to T <coughs> partial T to so this is it. <coughs> but remember, remember, T is G C times G. Okay. We put it here. And uh, so you can see partial T part. Uh, to T, okay, uh, partial T, partial T to partial G, uh, so then partial T to partial G, this one, okay, well, what's left? It's GC left, okay, then this is my GC left, this is my partial T, partial G, in here. So G divided by T, so G is here, and T is G C times G, like we say here, okay, this one here. So you, you just stay together, you get a one, okay, and it's nothing to do with what is your G, okay. So no matter how your G changes, okay, this is always one. In other words, if you have one percent in G. That will induce also one percent in T. This is exactly it. You didn't uh, greater than one. You didn't do less than one. You didn't do anything. So this is exactly you have garbage in, garbage out. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is exactly the garbage in and the garbage out. If you have a one percent garbage in G, you also got a one percent garbage in T. And T is the overall. Uh, this is from here to here is T. Okay. Okay. So no matter what you do here, okay, that doesn't matter. Okay. So this is actually a very bad news because your control GC adding here didn't help us to make this one smaller. In fact. The smaller, the better. Okay. So let's just let me move uh, your bus to those noise. Or we can see it's kind of like immune. Okay, to those changes in G. Yes. And again, re in reality, you here you always have some changes in G. Because this delta could be due to um, changing temperature and so on and so forth. So this is open loop. So I want to say this is bad because my GOC didn't change my S. Okay. 
didn't contribute to it. This is really bad. Okay, now let's take a look at close loop setting. Okay, for the close loop setting, the T is, of course, we know T is, is a forward, is a loop, is the H you see here. H you see here, okay? Usually we put H is one, but uh, for reality, in reality, H is, is not one. So let's see. Let's discuss this again. See, I have delta in here. How this affect my closed loop transformation? So this is called closed loop transformation. And remember, I told you it has another academic name, TFS. It's called complementary. Remember, transfer function. Arrow, complementary arrow. Function. Why we use this? I'm going to review from this point of view. So it's uh, interesting. Uh, take a look. This is a definition. This is also definition. Definition. Now let's uh, partial t partial g. If you do partial t partial g, you are going to have uh, a little bit involved. So if uh, you do the numerator first, GC, then you have a one plus GC, GH, but you need to have another term, okay? So you keep GC, G, not changed in the numerator, but denominator, what you guys can have. So you have a one, so minus one minus one plus GC, G, H square, Okay, square. But then you have a GCG, so you still have a times, with this one partial G, you have a GCH. Okay, GCH. And this term is the partial T versus partial G. You do collect the term, okay, collect term. This is a minus sign in here. You collect term, this is a Square, okay, so you have square in here. So then uh, for the numerator, so you have this one. Only GC left, only GC left, okay. Because the other, other term is cancelled, okay, it's also cancelled. So that's, this term is the same as this term, okay, after reduction. But G is still here. T we put this uh, this equation. This is my T. This is my T. So add together, then we are going to see what we have. It's one plus G C G H one. One divided by this. Okay. One divided by that. Isn't this interesting? So in other words, this is not one at all. Okay, it's not one because of this term. Okay, because of this term. Of course, you can say, oh, if my h is zero means, oh, this is zero means I, I have broken line in here, okay? So it's the same as open loop, okay? So we don't consider, uh, it's not zero is good enough. So then you have a way to say, oh, I can change this GC by my small design. Okay, small design in such a way that uh, the overall this one is less than or equal to one. In other words, this whole thing is called loop gain. Loop gain. If the loop gain overall is big, is big, then this is small. Okay, so so it may be reduced depending on how smart you are. Okay, below that of the open loop system by increasing this one over the frequency range of interest. This is an important statement because remember everything is bracket in here is bracket j omega. Okay? Everything is a transfer function, transfer function. So therefore you can only guarantee this is true over the frequency range of interest. Okay? Not all frequencies. So and in 
interestingly, if you change your controller a little bit of delta, you also have exactly the same sensitivity. Okay, so this is, now this time I want you to see an interesting thing. What if my edge is one? Yeah, in our previous analysis, we assume edge is one. Then that means what? That means T equals one minus S, okay? Or T plus S is one. I hope you can see this fact. That's why this is called complementary, while the S is called sensitivity. Okay, so, um, so everything started to connect. Okay. The reason we call T is complementary sensitivity to the function. Arrow sensitivity. T T. Okay, it's better to add this term. Um, so in other words, closed loop, uh, we, we ask the question, why close, why feedback? Is you've got a handle, uh, you have a handle. You can grasp and uh, try to change the sensitivity of the system. So this is great. You have a way or you have a control over it. Over it. What is it? It is the sensitivity. It is robustness to the changes, both in G, both in uh, GC. Make sense? So that's the good news. Both of the systems, we can um, change that. However, there's a bad news, dark cloud. Dark cloud. That means, I said just now here, if you make the three guy bigger, you can make the sensitivity small. But let's look at this. Uh, if you have a sensor from the function edge, have some changes, how this will affect my T, so we can do the same. Partial edge. A uh, partial T partial H and H to divided by T. So this is the T, this is H, this is the partial. This partial is uh, only one here. So you have a square in there, you have a negative sign in here. So I hope you know this. Uh, okay. Um, because uh, if we do um, like you have uh, A divided by one plus A X, I want to do a ddx, okay? So this will be minus a square, one plus ax square, okay? Uh, let's do a b, uh, it's a, it's the same a. This is, this is my a, this is my a, this is a, okay? So I hope you feel comfortable I write this one directly. So now, we can't do one of this, I have one left, so this is the final sensitivity. With respect to my sensor changes. Sensor um, changes or distortion or accuracy or some other factors make the edge change, the edge change in here. That will be affected, uh, reflected in the overall transfer function, okay? In such a way, uh, in such a way. Uh, however, remember, I want this one to be big, okay? So this is also big. Big is divided by big, you can ignore the one. So this is almost one, okay? Uh, of, of course, it's a minus one. Remember, this I said, one means if you have anything here, you cannot, uh, re cannot reduce the sensitivity. Uh, reduce the sensitivity. So in other words, in other words, if your sensor is lousy, 
<laughs> okay, if your sense is lousy, this lousiness will show up on the T here. Okay. So you all got a lousy control, closed loop control system. Okay. So for those who said that uh, I, I don't want to invest uh, to buy an accurate sensor, yet I want an accurate control system. So the answer is don't do the daydream. <laughs> this is already dictated by this equation or sensitivity analysis here. No way, don't even expect that. So, so all you should think about is, um, so you design a control system, you, uh, you, you, you analyze the overall sensitivity requirements, then you assign, or you do accuracy budget. Uh, accuracy budget. Uh, I think that's not the one. Uh, budget. Okay. The sensitivity budget. So then, based on that budget, the so design requirement, how your supervisor or your boss wants this control system accuracy, you assign the corresponding accuracy for your sensors. Okay. That makes better sense. You don't want to buy uh, 10 times more accurate sensors than you really need it. That's a waste of money, okay? Waste of money. Yet you cannot uh, expect your system performance uh, better than edge. That's no way, okay? This, this, this equation basically says, no way. <laughs> I like that, okay? So, Make sense? So mathematics derivation can give you insight. So, but what if you have a disturbance, okay? If you have disturbance, <clears throat> the disturbance input uh, go from here, go from here. So this is your, um, from disturbance to the out, this is the output out, this is the in, okay? Let's go back to this uh, again. This is the disturbance input, this is the output uh, controller variable. By doing that, you can see that I want this one to be big, okay? That means if you, when it is big, mm, then this can be dropped. So what you have left is this cancel, and right? you still have the one at uh, GCH. So is it possible, still possible, to make this one less this than one? Okay. So let's summarize. <clears throat> you should make the measurement subsystem accurate and stable. The input loop gain. The loop gain basically is called G, C, G, H. So the three loop gain means from here. This is loop G, G, C, G, H, okay? Increase that to reduce the sensitivity of the control system to the changes in the plant G and even control G, C. But you may wonder why I have GC is changing because it is my incremental one. It's possible. Remember, we are doing a lot of things as uh, digital control. A digital, you will have some accuracy you lose because of the digitization. Okay. So increase the gain of the GCH. Okay, it's here. Okay. You can reduce the influence of external disturbances. So that's good news, okay, that's good news. Okay. And this is a bad news, okay, <laughs> this is a bad news. Okay. Okay. So in practice, G is giving, is fixed, it, you cannot alter, 
Um, actually, it's also fixed if you already bought the, uh, the sensor. So what really you can do is to do the <laughs> smart your smartness. It's in here. <clears throat> In here, so so it's virtually impossible to achieve all the design requirements simply by increasing the scan. So we have to think about everything is a J omega. Think about you have a body plot on it. So you have body plot on it. So usually you have something like this. Um, you have something like this. So this is a body plot. But certain frequencies, the gain is high, and certain frequencies, gain is not so high. So, um, um, I, I said it this way. So, usually it's like that shape, okay? Of course, uh, to make sure the stability is not only magnitude, but also a phase, okay? So that you maintain the stability. Okay, stability. So that's all for the discussion of sensitivity. And uh, we have a re reunion here. Okay, reunion here. Why, why, why do we say that? Okay. So remember, we did something um, previously. So you have um, you have a system, you have control, you have a plant, you have output. Oh, no, 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 this is not true. Minus, plus, reference, this is Y. But uh, you have a, a disturbance from here, you also have a noise from here, okay? And you could have noise from here, okay? Let's consider just DNA. So uh, Y is due to R plus due to D plus something due to N. So what would could be here? T, right? close to the chunk of function. Um, what we could do here? We call CDY. Okay, CDY is um, G over one plus C D. Okay. And but what is this term? What is this term here? Okay, sensitivity S. Okay. So now we talked about this. But this is a superposition principle, right? Superposition principle of three inputs. Okay. Uh, but, but the S and the T are the same form as we just discussed in terms of uh, sensitivity function Y of X. Okay. So the S we talked about here is actually uh, talking about if you have a G is changing and how it's affecting my uh, T, okay, T, how this is uh, changing, this is exactly what? S. And this is actually one minus T. Of course, one S is one, okay? So here it actually is one. So that's why we call S is a sensitivity transfer function and the T is called a complementary error and a sensitivity function. Okay. So this is very beautiful. So we have two pathways to understand it. One is from a transfer function superposition point of view, and another one is from a sensitivity point of view. Okay. And this sensitivity can be used to both in static system like y equals fx or you have a transfer function. Very interesting. So next 
we are going to move to uh, motion transducers. <laughs> we talked about this. So this is my A, this is my V, this is my X displacement, this is my A dot. My A dot. So we are going to check uh, what sensors to measure what. Okay. So each variable is the time derivative of the preceding one. You know, this is my X dot. X double dot this is X triple dot. Okay. Okay. So a natural question is that if I buy a sensor to measure displacement, can I simply say you have X, then I put into the S in here and get a V, so I don't have to buy a velocity sensor. Why this is not possible? Why not? Okay, so before we, before we move on, we have to uh, resolve this problem. Okay, but remember, we always have something added in here. It's called noise. Okay, it's noise. So this noise added this to the x will get to the real. This is the real x. This is the real. V, but uh, actually you have a like M prime uh, add on this one. Okay, so this is your V uh, you get. Okay, so in some in summary, this is because of the noise amplification. Okay, why this is a big deal? Of course it is. So say for example, a small noise. Then I have a very big noise. So why this is it so? That is because if we do uh, body plot for this S, so it's basically omega. So you have a omega in here. So you have log omega in here. So you basically have this one. So this is a one. Okay, so it's zero dB. So it goes to infinity. Okay, so that's the problem. Then, then when omega is very high frequency, then this amplification is even higher. So when you have a high frequency, you have very high amplification here. So amplification here. So in reality, in reality, this is not usable. So this is called pure differentiator. It's to me dangerous very dangerous, I don't like it. So, so in reality, what we should do is um, something we call a practical, a practical, uh, you can pay it with a low pass filter in here. So remember in the PID, we talked about practical PID, it's because of this term. So in, in that sense, then you you choose the tau, your 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 body plot will look like this, okay? Or uh, you put it like this, okay? Depending on your tau, okay? Depending on the tau. Uh, in this case, the one of tau is the omega, okay? Mm. Oh, that's called practical. Practical um, differentiator to suppress this issue, so to suppress this noise issue. But in reality, this is not ideally working. So you still need to buy a velocity sensor um, because sometimes this noise is still too big. Okay. So. So one-to-one -one relationship may not always exist between the measuring device and the measured variables. So you, if you want to measure something, you may not find a, a real sensor to directly measure it. Let me give an example. Say for example, strain gauge, you measure strain, okay? So then stress or force. We can use this strain gauge to adapt to measure displacement using a suitable front and a sensor element. 
such as a cantilever or a string. Okay, so those um, things you should uh, know you can advance. Okay, so actually some of the measuring uh, mechanism is using the same idea. Okay, indirectly measure it. Okay. So, and uh, like optical encoder, okay, you can use it for displacement as well as for velocity, depending on uh, whether the number of pulses generated is counted or the pulse rate is counted. Okay, like uh, in unit time, how many pulses. So then, so the same one can do the two things. Like resolver, we're going to talk about it. Provide angular displacement. Uh, they differentiate the computer angular velocity. So, so okay, I hate this. Uh, differentiated is not working in practice. So you have to use cascade with the low pass filter. Okay. Uh, so in principle, because uh, you know what is the Newton's second law? If F is uh, M A, right? So if you know the M, you know the F, you can get A, while A is uh, X double dot. So those four sensors can be used as an acceleration sensor, okay? Then if you integrate it with one of F, then you can do velocity sensor. You need to integrate again, it's okay. So I said differentiation is bad. Is integration better? The answer is yes. It will not suppress, um, it will not going to uh, amplify the noise, it will suppress. Why? Because the body clock will look like this. Okay. So when the high frequency, this is a very small. Okay. But you will have a problem a low frequency is amplified a lot in those DC will drift you have that kind of drift problem okay you have a drift problem it's very easy to get drift uh, so sometimes you measure acceleration it's also called uh, inertia element like today in the drone you have IMU inertia measurement unit okay it's all based on the force measurement okay and you can add some damping element or spring element to make it a structure thin so we call that is a sonic and auxiliary sensor to make the behavior better to suppress that kind of drift okay So the question we just answered, why do we still need to uh, have a separate sensor to measure those four kinematic variables? So four kinematic variables, x dot, x double dot, and x triple dot. So these are called kinematic variables. Uh, because one related to uh, each other through integration or differentiation. Uh, so in theory, yes, in practice, no. Okay, unfortunately. Um, so it depends, okay? It depends on, if you say, oh, I don't care about noise, uh, it's fine. Okay. But you usually will care, okay? Depending on fact, several reasons. So nature of the major system is a steady or a high transient or periodical or narrow band or ball band, depending on that, okay? And uh, <clears throat> what is the frequency and range of interest? Okay, okay, yes, range of interest. If it's not a big deal, you have a big uh, noise in that frequency range, then it's fine. Okay, it's fine. So all matters is something we call <clears throat> SNR. <coughs> Excuse me. Called signal to noise ratio. Okay. And also, you need some precision capability. Do you have that ability 
to do that kind of processing like filtering, you know, and so on and so forth. Uh, but ultimate requirement is from the controller, okay? And uh, also the nature of the plant. So like what's time constant, what's the delay, and what's the hardware limitation, so. Yeah, especially in, in modern world, we add this one called precision, motion control, Okay, so when you need precision, you need <clears throat> precision in measurements. So those by doing a differentiation or integration may not really work. That's the accuracy requirement, okay? Uh, we talked about unacceptable noise because of the differentiation I illustrated to you. Uh, so then what would you do? Okay, here, um, here we can um, talk about what cases is okay to use um, not so good sensors or just use um, differentiation or integration. So here, the first one is low frequency applications, like order of one hertz, okay? So slow motion, okay, slow motion. Okay, slow motion. Um, talking about motion, uh, we talk about frequency. What's your uh, frequency? So I think you can do five hertz. If you use hand waving, five times a second is already very um, high frequency. Uh, that's your um, limitation. Is the, is the volume not, not good? Okay, so I hope this is okay right now. All right, so I'll try uh, to get closer, okay. Uh, for your eyes, okay, your frequency is around 25, uh, 20, 20, 20 hertz, okay, 20 hertz. So that's why in the motion picture, it's movie, okay, you need uh, uh, like uh, frames per second is about 25, okay. So that's it. Human is like 20, 20 hertz, or 5 hertz. It's already very high. So that's low frequency. I just let you know that's slow motion. But usually, uh, like 1k hertz is called intermediate frequency range. Say, for example, in the hard disk drive. Okay? Your red red head the motion is like several thousand hertz. Okay, it's very fast. But in some high frequency motion, it's high noise level. In this case, you probably want to measure acceleration. Okay, jerk in ground transition, like ride quality. So, can you? You guys um, got an experience about motion sickness? And I learned that I think the motion sickness is because of the jerk. The jerk. So make you feel easy, diesel and you know, feel sick, want to vomit. It's due to the A dot, okay? Today, <laughs> in manufacturing, you also have um, a lot of operations. Uh, you need uh, links to the comfort, person, human comfort, and product quality. Okay, product quality, especially like 
uh, say for example, still uh, in the rolling um, to make uh, the the sheet of metal uh, uh, thinner to by doing the freezing of the rolling processing. Um, and in some noise isolation, so for example, you have uh, automatically exo ANC, automatic noise cancellation, like uh, I'm using right now. Um, so all those controls you have to consider as uh, uh, comfort related, quality related. So that's the rule of thumb. So now, please pay attention. Please pay attention. We can go through this one uh, slowly. So these are the transducers name, and these are the variables you want to measure. And we this is uh, uh, the card <laughs> frequency range of interest. So we only can cure the frequency range like this, not higher, not lower. Okay. After that, we need to talk about what is your output impedance because otherwise you have impedance matching issue. And you have typical resolution. So resolution, you have accuracy. Remember accuracy, we use like a relative error in terms of uh, percentage, okay. And the sensitivity, okay. Like if you do one millimeter, then what is your uh, voltage change to 200 milliwatt and that kind of thing is called sensitivity. So we are going to cover potentiometer, LVDT, uh, LVDT, you are going to learn this one later. For linear variables, displacement transducer, okay? LVDT, so these are all for displacement. So, but for linear or uh, angular, okay? Can be angular. But this resolver is only for angular. So that is a three, four. Then you have tachometer to do velocity, AD current for proximate sensor is also displacement, piezo is uh, semiconductor strain gauge, all these are for the strain, okay? And the strain can be related to the acceleration and if you do um, corresponding to the displacement as well. So let's, let's summarize, okay? When you have a sensor, what you care, you care, the first thing you care is, the zero thing you care is what, what are you trying to measure, okay? Second, uh, the, the, the first thing is like, uh, what's the frequency range to be effective, okay? Then the impedance of the output, the impedance, um, Impedance, the uh, output impedance, the higher, the better. Okay, the higher, the better. And this, the wide, the better for the range. The resolution, of course, smaller, the better. So you can see there's some orders of magnitude difference for potential meter. You can do 0.1 millimeter. But for LVDT, you can do 0 0.001 millimeter or less. Okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, so for accuracy in the relative error, it's a point 0.1, and it's similar, okay? However, which one is sensitive? This one is sensitive, okay? Okay, this one is sensitive, okay? So that's for displacement. You can see the range is five hertz. It's like human. That's why this uh, potentiometer 
okay? That's why you call this is an arm, okay? This is like arm. So you, you, you move up and down, up and down, this arm frequency is like backwards, like yourself, okay? If you do very, very fast, you are going to mechanically wear it very quickly. So that's high frequency uh, motion, you should, high speed motion, you should not use potential on it, okay? Output impedance both are low, that's why you need all hand uh, to do impedance matching. Okay. And be careful about LVDTs and much higher potential here. So it has a very wide application. And we are going to go through all these things uh, closely. Uh, so, but I want you to memorize. Okay, memorize. You don't have to, but you have. But it's better to memorize. So you have five specs. Okay, you have five specs to check. Okay, first, frequency range of interest. Okay, second, output impedance, resolution, accuracy, and sensitivity. Okay, sensitivity. So I hope this table gives you a hint regarding uh, sensor selection. So when you prepare your sensor survey slide, you must minimally address these issues. But there are many other specs, okay? Many other specs, okay? other specs. So you, 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 if you buy a sensor, they will give you a spec sheet. So that spec sheet will tell a lot of details. So these are the common specs you should care when you select the sensor, okay? So we are going to start potentiometer. Then uh, we can finish today's lecture and we'll leave other um, motion sensors for our Friday. So at this point you may say, oops, Potentiometer, I, I, I knew it, I used it. Um, but probably things are not as uh, what you thought, that's simple. Uh, let's see, okay, uh, let's see, uh, let's see this. I'm going to read this, let's look at this uh, diagram. So this is a uh, arm, okay, or wiper. You have a resistive element, you have coils, okay. So then uh, the displacement is, uh, this is a zero displacement, it goes up. So you have, a, this is X. So it's somehow X is proportional to the, the voltage in here, so the V, okay? Well, V is uh, this R over this R, okay? All right, so, so that's called potentiometer, but we should not forget one thing, for you have to, because of the signal here, you will connect with something next stage of your circuit here. So this is called load impedance, okay? Load impedance, so V is no longer V0, it becomes, so this is called loading effect. So I'm going to show you that, uh, okay, this is a linear, this is a angular. So I think it's, it's clear, I don't have to explain too much. But what I want to tell you today is the serious problem of loading effect, non-linear effect. So it's, it is never a linear relationship. Okay, that depends on what do you cascade it to here, the loading. Let me show you, okay? So let's assume that using this uh, rotary potentiometer as an example, uh, let's assume that uh, when you have a position theta, you have a position theta in here, okay? Then your resistance is R theta. Of course, theta max is the percentage of uh, your then RC is 
uh, the whole thing here, the whole whole thing is the RC. Uh, I think I have a picture, no? Yeah, it's here. Okay, it's here. So you you have a this is a load. So this is a load. So this is an arm you move. So this is the angle of theta. Okay. So this part is R theta. The who part is R C here. Okay. This is the who part R C. So clearly, I have uh, R theta is uh, this is uh, what the divider kind of thing. Oh, this no, no no sorry I recall that is not a forty divider. This is physics. Okay. So you are here, so you have this proportion, okay? However, if we check the, the current, this is a KCL. So the reference minus output divided by this, <laughs> we have this uh, relationship, okay? Load resistance. So let's see this. So you have supply here from, from voltage from here to here, you have RC. Okay, then uh, you you will move. So basically, this guy and this guy will kind of like you have that. So this is in, okay. So this is ground. This is a V ref. This R L. And this is R theta. This is uh, this is going to here. Okay. So this is uh, the whole thing is uh, R C. Okay. Then you get one minus theta over R C, right? So after that, after that, we are going to have uh, this relationship, okay? This relationship, KCL. So then uh, we assume we have theta max is here. The theta max is here. So I use this as a ratio, okay? We end up with some um, output voltage. Uh, what is the reference? So there's a percentage. So I want to check. This is a percentage, okay? Versus this and theta max percentage. It's another percentage. Are they connected to this one as a linear? So the answer is no, because this is we care. So this is not linear. Okay. Of course, you can do a teleseries expansion and make it uh, largely linear, but it's only possible when you have a load divided by this one is greater than 10. Okay. Okay. So especially when this is small, you have a bigger error. So let's check the error here. <clears throat> so this is something I hope it will be linear. So this is... Um, V0, V0, and this is theta, theta max. I hope this is the case, but it's not. Uh, <clears throat> so what I'm going to get is something like this. So this is the theta, theta max. This is V0 divided V ref. Ideally, they should be linear, but in practice, it's not. Okay? That depends on how big is your load. If your load is small, Okay, or RC is big. Okay, relative speaking, relative speaking. So if uh, RL is uh, bigger than 10 times RC, that actually corresponding to this curve. So you can see the error is so big. Okay, so whenever you use a um, potentiometer as a motion sensor, you've got to be careful. Okay. 
about the speaker. I hope you remember the speaker. Okay. The reason is a lot of people assume this is um, using a potential meter. This is a linear. No, 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 no. That's not true. That's not true. So the error could be um, percentage-wise and the loading nonlinearity error in G. So that's defined in this equation. For loading nonlinearity error percentage, that percentage could be as high as 70%. Okay, 70%. That's very bad, right? So this is only saying that when you are in the middle, so basically here, we're talking about in the middle here, okay? Okay, in the middle here. So, okay. Okay, so <clears throat> after this, we're going to finish and the limitations of potentiometer. So I told you it's a slow motion. It's about uh, 25 hertz. No, 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 it's about five hertz, okay? Five hertz. About five hertz, okay? Five hertz. So because you have a moving slider, you have a mechanical contact, okay? Uh, so then mechanical loading also uh, is a problem. If you clip them too tight, you get wear off. Okay. Then if we have very high frequency measurement, so it's not possible because uh, the slider bounce is just dancing. Okay, yeah, you have friction, you have inertial resistance. So sometimes this wiper uh, could cause a uh, spark, like like fire hazard. Okay. Uh, if you have a power supply uh, changes like a battery goes down, that will also cause error. And when you have a load of resistance is low, you have loading error which is significant. So, and this resolution also uh, dependent on the turns and uh, the coil, uh, the wire gauge, okay, wire gauge. And also the uniformity, if the coil is not so uniform, you have trouble too. So it's good for some small displacement measurements and not so accurate, not so fast, it's good. So uh, yeah, you have wear out, you have a heating up issue, you have a slider and mechanic contact, and you have degradation issue, but there are good uh, advantages, uh, cheap, uh, easily available, and uh, you can use some higher voltage. Um, and uh, you don't need a have LPM in many cases, okay? If you have a good RL matching, okay? Uh, so, the impedance can be changed, uh, changing uh, the coil resistance. So, so conclusion, uh, potentiometer primary displacement transducers can be adapted to measure other types of signals. They like pressure or force, okay, uh, using some uh, front end elements. So, so, so that's it. We can finish it here and uh, let me see. Uh, today, I think you guys said something about noise issue, uh, volume issue. Uh, do you guys have any questions for today's lecture? And uh, uh, again, try to respect the potentiometer. There are a lot of things to you to don't know. Well, especially when you use um, potentiometer, the potentiometer you have to check that nonlinearity index, making sure you have to what it is. Okay. Uh, again, this is recorded. I'm going to post on the YouTube, and I hope um, the the sound will be not so bad. Okay. Uh, 
I'm going to stop the sharing to see whether you have questions. Questions? I had two hours uh, office hour yesterday. Nobody uh, really showed up. Um, I had a conflict in the lunchtime meeting with uh, Provost uh, Town Hall meeting. Sorry about that. David uh, Augustine was uh, meeting me uh, after six, so it was good. Anyway, uh, format the final exam and uh, most likely it will be a uh, in home three hours exam. So it's not like a take home. It's in three hours at least you finish everything and you submit. So I'll try to reduce a uh, number of questions so that you get enough time to summarize that, uh, take a picture and turn that in. Um, not everybody uh, will have uh, the tablet be all electronic, right? So you probably have a paper, you write it. Um, cumulative update on the format of the final exam. Uh, yeah, it is uh, mostly the cumulative. Okay, it's from beginning. Yeah. Everything we cover in this semester. Um, I suggest you guys go back to the all the homeworks. Um, uh, make sure uh, all the homeworks you can do, okay, and you understand it because there may be some slight changes to the homework questions, but the form, the essence, will be the same, right? Good job, everyone. And today we have uh, more people showed up. I'm happy about it. And I hope you guys stay happy, uh, stay safe, and uh, and start to um, do the sensor review. You want to leave some legacy about, uh, about your um, review slides that could be useful for others to refer to. And I, I, through this process, you have some deeper understanding of a specific sensor or actuator of your choice. So, all right. So, talk to you more next time. See you Friday. Bye bye.